What is up people and welcome to another video. This is going to be our unscripted Kubernetes lightning series where we go through Kubernetes from the beginning to the end. This is all the basic concepts. What is a pod? What's a container? What's a deployment? A service? An ingress? What's Helm? What's YAML? All of that sort of stuff. If you're new to Kubernetes, this series is for you. Now I have a lot of videos and content on Kubernetes where I go in a lot more detail. Some of those videos are really old and Kubernetes has moved on a long way. Now the first thing we'll be doing in this series is take a look at Docker and containers in general. Most people jump to Kubernetes and they have no idea how to run and build containers. And that is a big problem because it's difficult to diagnose containers if you're trying to learn Kubernetes. It's important to take a step back Make sure you can build and run containers locally on your machine and then deploy them to a Kubernetes cluster. So in this video, we'll be taking a look at and installing Docker. Build our first container, get it running and get it prepared for Kubernetes. We've got quite a bit to get into. So without further ado, let's go. Now I thought to mention that this series is totally unscripted. The plan for this series is for me to revisit all of the Kubernetes topics, stitch them all together in a nice series that flows really well, and people who are new to Kubernetes can learn how to spin up a Kubernetes cluster locally, learn what a pod is, what a container is, learn all the different Kubernetes concepts, and eventually we can get to Helm charts, deploy a lot of open source tooling, and you can use this series as a knowledge base to build and test things that you want to run on Kubernetes. If you need a cluster to do things like service mesh or deploy some Helm chart, you can use this series as a knowledge base. The other thing I want to mention is that currently I'm working on a course, a course that will be available on YouTube in a summarized, edited form, as well as a long form paid version. I'll be announcing this course in the future. However, that is taking up a lot of my time, a lot of time spent in pre and post production and designing and building a course. As I develop this course, I'll start sharing ideas with the community and I would love your feedback. But while I'm working on that course, I thought this series will be a good gap filler to get things going. So the first thing we have to do is install Docker. Now DevOps and engineers in general come from all walks of life using different operating systems. So in this demo, I'm gonna cover Linux and Windows. So here I have a Windows 11 machine. I'm just gonna open up the browser I'm gonna search for Docker and I end up on docker.com. And this allows us to download Docker. And in this demo for Windows, I'm just going to download Docker Desktop. There are a number of ways to run containers. You can use other systems like ContainerD, you can use Podman, but the most popular one is just using Docker. And the easiest one to start is just Docker Desktop. Go ahead and select Download for Windows AMD64, and that will start the download. I will also show you how to install this on Linux. And in this demo, I'm just gonna use WSL, which is Windows Subsystem for Linux. The install between WSL and Linux is identical. So if you're using Windows and you don't want to use Docker Desktop, you can actually run the same commands I'm about to run and use WSL instead. Now WSL stands for Windows Subsystem for Linux. In the past, when running Docker containers on Windows, you needed a virtual machine, like using Hyper-V or using VirtualBox. And that is heavy in terms of resources just to run containers. So nowadays, Windows has moved on and Docker Desktop actually can use WSL as a backend. Or if you don't want to use the Docker Desktop product, you can just use Windows Subsystem for Linux and run the exact same Linux install. And I'll show you how to do this. So now that we have our installer downloaded, I can go ahead and click it to open it up. That'll prompt me and ask me if I want to allow this app to run. I go ahead and say yes. Now we can close the browser and it'll start the Docker Desktop installation process. And I can just go ahead and select these two. So I want a shortcut on the desktop and I want to use the WSL Windows Subsystem for Linux backend instead of Hyper-V. Go ahead and do that, click OK, and that'll install Docker Desktop. And there we go, the installation is done. And I'm presented with a installation succeeded page. And it says you must log out of Windows. So I, I guess we'll have to close and it may restart. There we go. And it's restarted. Now it's important to know if you're installing Docker Desktop, there is a subscription service agreement and commercial use of Docker Desktop at a company 
of more than 250 employees or more than 10 million in annual revenue requires a paid subscription. So I would encourage Docker Desktop only for personal use. And if you're using it for commercial use for your company, check with your manager before using this for company purposes. Go ahead and say accept. And now we get to this menu where we have to complete the installation. I'm just gonna go ahead and say use recommended settings. Go ahead and say finish. And then you'll be presented with a screen where you can say whether you use this for work or personal use. I'm just gonna go ahead and skip this part. And this will take you to the Docker desktop landing page. And you can see the Docker engine is stopped. And now you can see it's starting the Docker engine. And it might take some time. If you look at the bottom corner of your screen in your system tray, you'll see a little Docker icon where it shows you that the Docker engine is starting up. So have a look there, but it may take some time to start. And once Docker engine is running, you can see we are now on this page. So there's no containers running at the moment and the engine is good to go. I can now immediately go ahead and open up a PowerShell window. So I just hit the start button, type PowerShell, open up Windows PowerShell. This will give me a terminal. And this is a very important step. No matter where you're running Docker, whether it's Linux, WSL or Docker desktop, you want to go ahead and test and make sure you can run a container. So type Docker run dash IT and just type Alpine. So I'm going to run a Alpine Linux container, Docker run minus IT and Alpine. You'll see an unable to find image and it's going to try to download the image from Docker Hub. And you can see it's downloaded that image. And this is Alpine. I can do cat slash etc slash os release. We can see we are now in Alpine Linux. I can type exit. I can say Docker PS. We can see there's no containers running. So we know Docker is now working. Another thing you'll need that is very important is a Docker Hub account. So head over to Docker, sign up, create an account. This is because Docker has a very large container registry where you'll be able to pull images like we just did with Alpine. And you'll also have access to push images to a container registry if you need to. Docker Hub has a public registry. Once you learn more about containers, there are also alternative registries available. All the major cloud providers like Google and Microsoft and Amazon all have container registries as well. And generally container registries require authentication. And for this, you'll use the Docker login command. Now that we can run containers on Docker desktop on Windows, let's move over to Linux. And Windows subsystem for Linux. So what I want to do is install a fresh version of WSL. So what I've done is I've said WSL list to list out the distributions. You can see there's an Ubuntu 24, which is the default one that shipped with WSL. And then there's a Docker desktop one, which is installed by Docker desktop. I'm going to go ahead and type WSL dash dash unregister, unregister the Ubuntu one, and then also unregister the Docker desktop one. Just get rid of them. Type WSL dash dash list. I can see there's no installed distribution. And what I will do now is I'll go ahead and install a new distribution from scratch. So to do that, I say WSL dash dash install minus D and I'm going to install Ubuntu 24. Go ahead and run that. That'll take a few minutes to install and set up. Now I'm presented with a prompt to fill in a username, I'm going to give a username and a password. Go ahead and retype that and WSL is now installed. So if you're on Linux or on WSL, you type Docker, you may not have it installed. So next up, let's go to docker.com and grab the instructions to install Docker on Linux. So what you wanna do is head over to docker.com and then click on the document section here on the top right. Click on docs. This will take you to the Docker docs page. And what you're looking for is the Docker engine. You can see it on the left side over here in the menu. You don't want Docker desktop for Linux. You want the Docker engine. This will give you the Docker CLI and the Docker daemon running in Linux. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Docker engine. Then we're presented with a page and an option to install the Docker engine. Go ahead and click that. And you can see you're presented with the page with the supported platforms. And what we're looking for is the Ubuntu install. So I'm gonna click the Ubuntu install here. 
and this will take you to a page which says install docker engine on ubuntu there's the os requirements we don't care about that we don't have to uninstall any old versions as we're starting from scratch now there's a bunch of installation methods you can choose from there is a install it manually section as well as a convenience script so if you're on linux you can run the convenience script or you can install it manually now the steps are basically to run apt update to update our local source list then we install CA certificates and curl as those are the dependencies needed to continue. Then we set up the key rings. You can see we download the GPG keyring files over here. So it's using curl to fetch those and give them chmod rights. And here it's adding the apt repository for the apt sources. So it's adding this to our sources list and then running apt get update to apply them. So let's go ahead and run these commands. We got sudo apt update, put in our password. You'll see all this output. Next step is to install CA certificates and curl. Go ahead and grab that, paste that, run it, say yes. It'll install the dependencies. Next step is to follow all these steps to get the apt sources updated for Docker. Go ahead, paste that, take the next line and the next line and then add the repository to our app source list copy that go ahead and paste that all done and then app get update to make that take effect and now you can see we have the docker repos now now to install the latest version it's simply sudo app get install and you can see here docker ce this is the community edition the docker ce community edition cli this will give us access to docker commands uh, docker relies on container d so it's going to install container d it's going to install the docker buildx plugins as well as the compose plugin so copy this go terminal paste it and let that install go ahead and say yes and that'll install docker on linux now you can see after it's installed i do docker ps to list containers and i'm getting a permission denied that is because my user doesn't actually have access to permissions to use docker and we can fix that but to showcase you the reasoning if i type sudo to elevate my permissions and i say sudo docker ps it works if you go to the documentation you'll see that this is documented here we're trying to run docker without root the docker group exists but contains no users this is why you're required sudo to run docker commands so there's a post install link click that and this will give us a couple of more commands to run we need to create the docker group so go ahead and copy that paste that to the terminal the group already exists so that's all good we're going to add our user to that group so i'm going to go ahead and copy this next command back to the terminal paste it all good now if i type exit i go back into wsl and now i can run docker without sudo docker ps you can see there's no containers running and that's how you install docker on linux and to make sure docker works properly i can say docker run minus it to run a container interactively just run alpine we can see that is pulling alpine image and running it i can type exit to just go out of that container and docker is now working on linux So that's the first step done we've got docker installed we can run containers the next important step is to make sure we can actually build containers so you might have some code or application that you want to run and deploy to kubernetes so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take a python microservice that i have just a small hello world microservice running python flask i'm going to go ahead and clone all the source code locally so we're going to need git and run git clone and then use docker build to build the python application locally so to have access to the source material and example applications i use throughout my youtube channel you want to go ahead and look at the link below in the description you'll find a link to my docker development youtube series and what we are after is in this folder you will find python if you click into that you'll find a docker file and source code if you go into source code we have some python application here and we'll end up running this on kubernetes so what you're going to do is just go back to the root of the repo click the code drop down button and copy the clone url then we're going to go back to our terminal in our linux environment i'm going to create a new folder called git do ls see my file is there and i'm going to do change directory into git do ls there's no git repos there I'm going to say git clone and I'm going to clone this repo by pasting the URL I copied. 
that'll clone all the files locally and make it a lot easier for me to follow this guide. If you're on Windows, you should see this pop up in your user's directory where you cloned it. Go in there. You should see the Python folder. You should see the source code and the Docker file. We're interested in this Docker file. So what I've done is opened up Visual Studio Code and opened this repo that I've just cloned to make it easier to view all the files and folders in this repo. I can then open the Python folder and in here is a Docker file. Now taking a look at this Docker file, we basically start from a Python base image and then we create a new folder and set that as our working directory. We copy a requirements.txt into this working directory and then we run pip install. This is the default method for installing dependencies in Python. If we take a look at the source folder and this requirement.txt, basically it's just installing Flask. Flask is a popular web server for Python and you use it to run web applications and APIs. So that's our dependencies. We go back to the Docker file. We do pip install, which will install those dependencies specified in the requirements TXT. We then copy the remaining source code into our working directory. We give Flask an environment variable so it knows what application to run. In our case, it's gonna run server.py. And then I have a layer here just for debugging. We don't need that. With Docker multi-stage, it will automatically skip this. It will go from our base as prod, as our final image. And this is the command it's going to run. It's gonna say flask run, and it's gonna run on port 5000. So we should be able to go ahead and build this container image. So I'm in Linux and I'm in my Git repo. I'm gonna change directory to the Python folder. I do ls, you can see the Docker file right there, the one we just looked at. I can say docker build dot minus t and i'm just going to call this python app go ahead and run that and that'll do docker build build a container image that we can run locally and eventually we can learn how to run this container image in a kubernetes environment and there we go our container has been built and now i can say docker run minus it i can expose port 5000 by using the minus p flag and i run my application as python app Go ahead and run that. And now our application is running. You can see it's running on port 5000 and it started my server.py. And if I go to a browser and open up localhost 5000 in the browser, I get a hello world page. So that's as simple as that. Now I have Docker running on my machine. I've got a container image. I've got Docker file. I have a running container that works. And in the next video, we can take a look at running Kubernetes. So hopefully this video set you on a path to be able to run containers on your machine locally. And if you're new to Docker containers, I would highly recommend you learn not only how to run containers, but how to expose the port to the container needs, just like we did in this video, and how to mount files into a container using Docker volume mounts. In the next video, what we'll do is we'll spin up a Kubernetes cluster in one of my favorite tools. And this is a tool that I use to test Kubernetes production grade applications. If you like the video, be sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell. And if you wanna support the channel even further, be sure to hit the join button down below to become a YouTube member and follow along on the socials so you get an update on the development of the DevOps course. And as always, thanks for watching and until next time, peace.